Welcome back everybody. I'm gonna bring you along for a little paint chat today. See here we're still working on my 15 millimeter Continentals plug and through them guys a little slowly but surely. We're gonna start out with working on some of the muskets. I'm gonna just go in with some new wood. Give a little shake. Shake and bake. Seems to be good consistency. I added some water to this about a week ago. That seems to be pretty good. And I'm going to be using my Regiment brush, Army Painter, Fine Point. Hat around. I want to get my hat in a shot here. We'll go in on the shot a little bit here. Show you some more of the detail. That seems to be good. And you see what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go in and just pretty much do a straight line. Now I will go ahead and paint all of the musket and I'll come back in with some natural steel or bolt gun metal and just do the barrels later. That will be our next step. And also I will get the bayonets. Just zoop, straight down the line, right down to the stock of the musket. And um, yeah, I hope everybody's getting excited about Christmas. Uh, we are getting close uh, at the time of this filming. It is the Friday before Christmas. So we're excited. Got one home from college. She is working. <clears throat> She's a worker bee, just like my son. And he'll be coming in Christmas Eve after work. Uh, I think, think he has to work past noon. And uh, we'll let our Christmas festivities begin. It's a week long of feasting and watching good movies and doing hobby time right my business is officially shut down for the 2019 season and uh, a long deserved break for me uh, and next year will be my 30th year in my business hard to believe I do the fronts of the muskets. I'm going to flip them around. And that's one of the things that I love with the popsicle stick method is just assembly line painting at its finest. Zip right on down. Zip right on down. You can see how I'm doing it there. Bing, bang, boom. Just right down the line. You can see these guys here, they're kind of ragtag. They got coverings on their ears. Some of them have blankets, as you can see, wrapped around them. I've got three regiments. I think I'm going to mix them in with as like um, auxiliary reserves. And you'll see the next strip I'm going to do here. They've got bayonets drawn. And they are definitely fresher looking troops. <clears throat> so we'll put the fresh troops out on the front rank. I'm going to build three um, regiments. Each regiment has 20 figs models on each stand. You don't have to worry about getting deep down in the recesses on these guys. You're, uh, <clears throat> I use a medium or light brown wash. And it's going to get down on those nooks and crannies and it's going to make the models really pop. So here I'm coming in from the side. Make sure you can see some of that. You can see from the side there I've got some areas that need a little bit of brown leather or, or new wood, I'm sorry. So this is the nice thing. You can kind of twist and turn this and get down in your different angles. You can even go upside down if you need to and get a, like a low angle. 
<clears throat> so it really works uh, quite well, this technique uh, I borrowed from Rob. Uh, I noticed the first time I went over to play, he had a number of these uh, 15 mils ranked up like this. And as many of you know who follow my channel, uh, for rank and file battles like this, I'm really into the 15 mil. Kind of goes to my roots, you know, really starting out with historicals in uh, Flames of War, which is 15 mil, which is a great scale. And <clears throat> you're definitely doing company level action. Right, so I got three, three of these stands done. I got three of those, the Ragtag Brigade, let's call them. And now I've got three stands of these dudes. Uh, bayonets drawn in full march. Um, so we'll get these done up. I've got typically 10 per, so 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. So there's 11 on the stand. And it was some uh, extras, but basically you see where I'm going with that. So I can uh, pull them off, put them on the mounting. I'm going to go right on the top here. And then I'll come back in and we'll do that barrel line with just a thin line of metallic paint. All right. So I'm going straight down the line here. Boom, boom, boom. Bing, bang, bing. And, uh, we had a big cold spurt this week. Uh, kind of shut me down early for the season. Um, you know, the evenings we were getting down to five degrees Fahrenheit, so uh, pretty cold. It's going to get up to 40 today, and then next week it's going to be in the low 40s. So one extreme back to the other here in the Ohio, the Ohio River Valley. Hey, if you don't like the weather here in Ohio, wait 10 or 15 minutes, and it'll change on you, <laughs> right? So I'm going straight down the line. Make sure I'm staying in the shot here, kids. And um, also doing some work on my end scale layout. I'm kind of really prepping until my new layout gets started. It's probably going to be a, by this time next year, at least. <laughs> it's got a lot of planning involved. Was starting a new layout so we got to come up with the layout design we've got to <coughs> we've got to come up with um, the bench work I'm going to do which is going to end up being in this area I'm currently sitting is in the future will be a new train layout it's going to be really sweet I can't wait let's see let's go ahead now I'm noticing on these straps. You can see there's like straps get up here so I can get on that for you. I want to go ahead and hit those with the new wood too. No one's going to notice it's the same tone as uh, as the earth. And once we do a wash, you know, we're looking for a good tabletop standard here. We're not getting into a lot of super detail. And that will work just fine. You see I'm just kind of Tilting them to the side a little bit. And this gets me in the perfect angle that I need. Looks like I'm missing the stock. Go back, I'm going to hit the stock. And we'll spin them around to the other side here. So once we get done with this new wood, I will break out the bolt gun metal. I think I'm going to use the natural steel, actually for Vallejo. And then after that color, we're going to go in with the flesh on the hands and the faces. And then <clears throat> we're really getting pretty close to being done with these. I'm talking, uh, you know, five or six colors. A wash, a protective coat, and then we're ready for, for basing. All right. Actually, I don't do my protective coat. That's my final step. I actually do that after basing. 
That way my basing materials um, sprayed and it also helps hold the basing material down so everything's nice and firm. That's kind of what the way I like to do it. Like so. Right down the line. And like this. Bing, bang, boom. We'll flip these around. Come in on the other side. I think I'm gonna have to come at an angle like this, I think is gonna work good. And I can just come in from the side like this. And get everything. Don't freak out too much if you can't get in every little nook and cranny, like I said, because you're gonna get a nice heavy wash on these. And after I do a wash, I'll inspect them and see if I need to pick out some other colors. There's some highlights maybe if I want to. It just depends how the wash ends up with this blue or the blue coat. You can see this really gets me into the great angles that I need <coughs> to get on these suckers. So, coming in. The comment below, guys, if you are interested, if you're coming from 40K or you've been playing a lot of fantasy and sci fi and you're really kind of interested in getting into historicals, um, if you have any questions on scale, uh, like I said a minute ago, I'm really going after the 15 mil because 15 mil is not only necessarily affordable, uh, more affordable because the figs are, are cheaper. These are also pewter, right? They're not, they're not plastic. So they've got some nice weight to them. They feel like game pieces, you know? All right, that's good. That was uh, pretty much three, three angles I used on those. So put them in the line. Grab our next stand. It's the exact same types of dudes. I'm interested to see how many came in that in these packages I bought. So there's two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. So I'm, in this, I'm doing a, probably a little bit bigger groups on these regiments. Probably be over 20 figs, right? But uh, it's still going to work out good. Go back and see some of my other videos, especially studio updates that'll show you some of the British, which I've finished with. You know, with the Continentals, I've already got three regiments painted. I've got a regiment of um, artillery done. They turned out really good. And um, just, you know, <laughs> slowly going along. Now, if you're a guy that's got a lot of time on your hands, you're retired or you're a student and you've got some days off where you got some dead time. I'm uh, fitting this in with other endeavors, as it were. Um, and um, so, yeah. Just take your time. It's this is not something you want to rush at. You'll get there. Uh, don't be. Don't let this scare you off. It's not really that hard. The most important thing is having good equipment, like anything. You know. Buy some good quality brushes. Take good care of the brushes. You know, look at some of my other videos. I show you the uh, the brush cleaner that I use. The brush, um, what's it called? Uh, brush restorer. It's basically brush conditioner. And you can get a lot of life out of these brushes. But if you're working with crappy brushes, you're not going to have fun doing this. Um, carve out an area where you can paint and build even if it's just an old table an old fold up table it doesn't have to be fancy and get you some good lighting now recently on my paint desk I have another light strip up here with three bulbs and I went to back to the 3000k uh, 3000 Kelvin 
and it will be the 100 watt equivalent bulb um, is how they rate them because I felt that the 5000K was just it, the light was just too blue right so I switched completely back everything on my paint desk I have five bulbs burning and they're all 3000K 100 watt equivalent bulbs and I'm getting really good light out of that so your eye strain is at a minimum and then I that's why I do little batches I'll do some of this I'll take a break and then I'll do another color I've tried using the wet palette it's just not my thing I think it gets the paint too watery for me and it's hard for me to control the the viscosity viscosity of the paint <laughs> um, so we're gonna go back below again he's so gonna come back in on the shot more so you guys can see I'm gonna come again I'm gonna pivot and again both of my hands this is resting on the table and my wrist is resting on the table right you kind of find uh, forming like a tripod and you just do little small movements bing bang bing and just work through it it's not hard um, so yeah I'm gonna go out Monday do some last minute Christmas shopping a few things here and there and going to the grocery to get the meats and things we need for for Christmas Day and Christmas Eve. And, um, yeah, I was really thinking about doing the uh, what is it? The the Star Wars movie that's just being released. I've heard so many bad things about it. I'm probably just going to wait till it comes on to Amazon Prime. In a month or two and then I'll just watch it on that <clears throat> I'm gonna spin them around going from the other angle the rise of Skywalker yeah, it's not getting a lot of good reviews they've really butchered that storyline pretty pretty badly I think a lot of Hollywood movies these days, guys, are just overrated. I'm sorry. Now they've resorted to comic book movies, right? Literally comic book characters. That's the big genre right now. They can't write good movies, so they have to steal the stories from the comic books. Right? What are you going to do? Yeah, this is not going to be a good angle. Here, like, you know, see what I'm doing here? I'm just resting the side of it down on the table and forming my basically like a tripod. And it keeps everything stable. All I have to do is do a little pivoting. And now something else I wanted to point out too that I've been monkeying with with these strips like this is uh, glue. Because I glue them down and then I just pull them off. I'm just finding I'm going right back to the white Elmer's glue, right? PVA glue. I found that the um, wood glue is too strong because it's going up against wood. <laughs> and if I was using too light of a dab, it wasn't holding and sometimes they would pop off while I'm painting. So I kind of found like the perfect amount to put on the bottom of each fig and I just go dink 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 and pop them on and push them off to the side let it dry and you'll be surprised just a little pull on this and they just boop, they pop right off if I get a stubborn one I get my needle nose pliers out I get down on that base and just pop it but that's what I'm doing I'm not using my usual uh, poster tack right like I use for my my 28 mils. All right. 
So something that I've kind of found uh, that really works the best for me. All right, we're going to do one more of the last strip. Uh, just surveying and make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, there's a stock I missed. I don't know how I do that. And sometimes I go back into my final paint phase and I'll realize now I totally missed a couple of dudes with the color. All right, coming in from the top. Bing, bing, bing. I've been looking online <clears throat> at the Star Wars Legion stuff. I don't even know if I'm going to mess with the starter box. I guess I might since if you think about it, it is a kind of a decent value as far as if you bought everything individually. You're saving maybe 20 bucks. Uh, I'm really looking forward to building and painting a couple ATSTs. I really like those. See, I'm breaking my rule. I need to stick to the top instead of twisting it already. See, I'm just going to go right down through the tops and just do the tops. Alright. Some guys, they don't even paint the barrels. They just do the bayonets. They do the, the wood tone for the musket. Because at this scale, on the tabletop, once you get them ranked up, it's not as noticeable, the barrels being painted. I just do it since it's, because it's so easy. It doesn't take long to do. And if someone picks up a stand of or a regiment and looks at them closely, they'll be able to see that there's a little bit more detail. Yeah, let me know in the comments below, guys, if you guys are into Star Wars Legion. Do you have any pros and cons? Oh, I did watch a recent video from Little Wars TV. And they're, no, you know, that's a little pricey. Well, you know, that's getting into gaming in general, honestly. And these companies, they're charging what the market will bear, and it will help keep these companies in business long term. And they've got a ton of Star Wars games. Fantasy Flight Games has a ton of different kinds of uh, Star Wars games. Star Wars Armada, they just revamped that. Um, X-Wing, which I have that game. I have some ships for X-Wing. But I'm always, you know, since I was a 12-year-old kid standing in line in 1977, I've always had this uh, thing for the Star Stormtroopers, so I'm really looking forward to building an Empire Army tricking it out. All right. Tricking it out. Get my Darth Vader. Oh, nine yards. Alright. Just waiting on the line like that, guys. <clears throat> We're going back to Star Wars, um, the new movie, Rise of Skywalker. Um, well, these guys that like the new stuff, and you'll find the older guys don't like it as much. I think they didn't do a good job of continuing the storyline. Uh, as far as uh, taking the old characters and building on them forward, as far as we got Han Solo and Princess Leia's son, Offspring, is the bad guy now. And one of the bad guys. And, uh,. Uh, Luke never had any offspring. I just thought there was a lot more they could do with that with taking the old characters and uh, maybe doing a spin-off with their children or something. I don't know. So there's some continuity in the characters. I think it was a big mistake to kill off Han Solo, but that could have been... You know, we don't know if... Harrison Ford was just not interested in that anymore. And we don't know all the back, back room deals. 
I go on. Boom. And on this side. Bing, bang, bing. Bing, bang, boom. Right up the road, Joe. Actually, that's a better angle right there. Get these guys wrapped up. Then I got my skirmishers. I've got my light infantry. I've got uh, do, 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 two regiments of light infantry. And then my, my cavalry, and I'll be done with this army. Start playing some games, rise and fight again, and if I find that I need to, some more fleshing of the forces, I will, but I think that's going to be, you know, a good little game, a couple hour game, worth of units. And that's kind of another approach too, guys, is I usually will build at least two forces, obviously with War of American Independence, there's only two forces. <laughs> Right, Americans and British, pretty much. You could bring paint some Prussians if you want, but those are just different factions of the two main forces, obviously. So, um, but you know, other game systems out there that may have multiple factions. I'll build two or three. That way, you can have someone come over to play, and they don't have to have an army, and you can still play. Right. All right, guys, that's it for the the new wood on these suckers. Let me get my brush cleaned up and we'll bring you back and we'll get started on that natural steel on the uh, bayonets and the barrels. Okay guys, <clears throat> we're gonna come back. We're gonna, got really two choices if you're a Citadel guy. I've got some bolt gun metal left over from years I've had. I keep watering it down. Or, uh, you know, I really like to use this natural steel, right? So we're going to go after this. I'm going to try to get this used up. I'm really trying to switch over to Vallejo mostly, guys. Or a pot with our lid there. We're going to go in with our first stand. I paint better with my glasses off since I'm far-sighted. Or near-sighted, sorry. And we're going to go in, begin with our regiment brush. And we'll go down the line, hit these bayonets. Yeah, that's spreading pretty good. So I'm in our shot here, guys. Okay, right, so this is a shout out to one of my longtime subscribers, Gunner Sorum. Hey, Gunner, what's up, man? Thanks for watching the channel. Um, so t this afternoon, I've been uh, with the release of this new Star Wars. Um, and uh, he's a fan of the prequels. I'm kind of critical of them. I'm uh, <laughs> I'm rewatching them. I'm going to come up on the shot here. I had to readjust my tripod. Sorry, guys. I'm going to come up on the shot here a little bit. Um, actually, I probably need to go down on the shot a little bit. There we go. That's better. Anyway, Gunner, I'm re-watching. The original twil tri or <laughs> their prequels, and uh, you know I gotta say they're growing on me. They're definitely growing on me. All right? Maybe I did need to come up on the shot, guys. Been a while since I've done a paint and chat. Uh, coming into the winter, I want to divide up my my. Uh, my work days here in the studio. Where, uh, make sure we're at. 
back on the shot as much as we can. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, I'm gonna do some uh, work it out on my shop, my heated shop. I'll come down here and do some fr more framing and then uh, I'll finish up the evening as I'm working on some of my projects. Um, so I plan on doing some more paint chats, especially over the winter time. Just the very top of the musket. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just a light touch. Just a light touch and then, you know, drag it down. Light touch, drag it down. Light touch, drag it down. Ba-boom. Ba-boom. All right, now I'm going to uh, spin them around. remember whether or not they have a, a water can. I think we have something on the top back here guys. I'll have to get later but we need to pick out some of these packs. All right? I'm going to do a little research in my encyclopedia of American War of Independence uniforms uh, and see what I need to pick out back there with all those packs in the back. You see all their Coming in with the bang on ants. Bing, bang, boom. Right down the line, guys. This is assembly line painting. If you're going to get into rank and file battles, including, hey, uh, 40K, Age of Sigmar, you just, is, you know, painting stormtroopers, you're probably going to have to, at some point, do a little bit of this technical. If you're a, a younger person tuning into the channel and you're thinking, oh, you know, I'm thinking about getting into this uh, historical. So I really like history, etc. Guys, get on uh, Old Glory. Whether you want to do American War of Independence, whether you want to do um, uh, American Civil War, which is my next historical uh, collection. Um, get on there. Buy a few a few packs at a time. You know, build two, two, three regiments at a time. You don't have to go in and blow. You know, you were talking, you know, 50 bucks. You could at least, like, buy all the cavalry you need. And do it you know, step by step. Right? Step by step. When my wife and I got married 25 years ago, we had a little apartment with a one-car garage. It was a townhouse. And, um... That's where I started my business out of there. Parked my truck in the garage. I stacked fertilizer <laughs> on the sides of the walls, along the sides of the walls. I had a little tiny area where I could put a a workbench with my toolbox so I could work on my equipment. Our bedroom, bare bedroom was our office, right? It's st one step at a time, guys, one step at a time. What's that old saying? Put one foot in front of the other and soon you'll be walking across the floor. And before you know it, you'll be getting somewhere. Same thing with uh, hobby guys. You know, these guys, I was, one of the hobbies I've, I don't know that I'll ever get into it, but we have a local uh, RC, air, airplane RC hobby group nearby, and they have a little airstrip for their RC airplanes. And uh, those things are amazing. 
but that takes a that just takes step by step you know go out and get a five thousand dollar jet powered uh, RC aircraft you know your first time out you uh, you buy a, a small kit and you work your way up it's the same thing with this hobby right same thing with this hobby I encourage you if you can just get a little even if it's like I said earlier it's if it's just a fold-up table you got your laptop or a little TV I love to put movies on documentaries if you go back and watch my earlier videos you can see the progression of my work area I started literally with like I said I just had a, a heavy-duty fold-up table right Actually, I had two of them. One I used as my build area, and one I used as my paint area. And you just go from there, guys. Bing, bang, bing. Bing, bang, boom. Probably have to go under these a little bit. I'm getting all of the what good metal I need to. So if you're a Citadel, you like to use the Citadel paints, go for it. And these, uh, they're good paints. I gotta say their metallics are actually better than, um, than, uh, the, uh, Vallejo. Vallejo tends to be on the thick side. And, uh, the Citadel has a lot of good pigment in it. Right? It really does. And I can't rag on them too much. Alright, and so I like to dip out of the cap. You see here I'm gonna do a shake. Get some more paint up in the cap. Get these finished up. I'm about to go back to those other two stands and get on the bottom side of those bayonets. You won't really see it much because you're mostly looking at the armies on the tabletop top down but that's okay. So just a little light touch Just a little light touch. Just along the tops of the barrels. <clears throat> Put those down gently. Put them aside. I'm going to go in underneath there. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of, I see a lot of white under there. So I'm going to get back under there. Brush, brush, brush. All right, cover that up. Also, the ends of the barrels too. I'm hitting that, making sure I'm hitting that good. I'm coming around. All right, that worked out good. Plop those down, get my next stand, turn them upside down, oh yeah, 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 I definitely got to get up underneath there. But yeah, I've been watching the prequels again today, and why be damned, <laughs> I'm watching uh, Phantom Menace, uh, you know what, it's starting to grow on me. <laughs> I wonder if that'll be like that in five or ten years. I'll watch these uh, quote-unquote new Star Wars films, new trilogies, and they'll start to grow on me. You never know. 
I don't want to be too negative. But God, everybody knows. It's hard to get quality these days, including in the movie industry. All right, I'm put that off to the side. Go ahead and clean my brush, go back on the shot. Let's go ahead and clean my brush. I'll show some of you new guys what I'm using here. I got like 99% of the paint off the tip of my brush. You don't ever want to go down to the hilt, guys. Just go to the like the the top half of your brush, right? Brush cleaner. Highly recommend. It. It's cheap. Get it on Amazon. I think it's less than 10 bucks. So I have two glass. It's basically like soap, and you kind of just get your brush wet and rub it and lather it up. Right, lather it up. Almost, it's like a soap, but it has a conditioner in it for horsehair brushes, right? And then rinse it again. But I have two nice glasses over here because um, the glass is heavier and it stays put, and it's clear, so I can see how dirty the water is getting. But what I do is I have one for final rinse, or I can use with my dropper to thin down my paint then I have one that's my main rinse or my main uh, cleaner so here we've got the brush restore I just started using this I don't know the last month or so all it takes is a little dip I work it in with my fingers because I'm done for the day all right and I set that aside with my other brushes let it dry and it has a additive inside of this that will um, make your brushes last longer it's like less than ten dollars and this is you can tell this is gonna last probably years right so it's a it's a cheap investment for making your brushes go longer and I'll show you for fifteen dollars on Amazon you can get this uh, three three kit uh, brush system and it is the these are the three brushes I've got several of them over here I bought I buy two or three packs at a time for 15 bucks but you're gonna get your insane detail which I love this brush you're gonna get your classic regiment I'm using this 90% of the time okay it's a fine tip horsehair red sable brush and then you've got your small dry brush. And you can see this is, I, I love this brush. Uh, it's so good for doing your washes and then also your light dry brushing as, as it's called. But um, you get it back in the sleeve here without screwing up the brush. And then I have a, a canister with those brand new brushes. Then I have my older brushes and for you new guys, go to Hobby Lobby, go to some, uh, you know, any kind of craft store and buy a, they sell them usually in big bags, 10 bucks, 12 bucks, a bunch of these inexpensive larger brushes. These are great also for doing larger dry brushing projects for larger model kits, scenery, etc. They're, they're cheap. You still get a lot of use out of these. Um, they're super good for dry brushing. They're really good for applying uh, washes for your larger kits, your uh, buildings, models, uh, anything like that. All right, guys, if I don't put up another video before Christmas, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, but I'm sure I'll be putting something up before then. I'm not going to leave you holding the bag on these. I'm going to at least film this step by step up and through the basing process because I get a lot of uh, messaging uh, wanting me to go over the basing of these 15 mil regiments and my custom bases. So I'm going to include that. If I don't put anything up, you know that I'm still filming, I'm still putting together video content, 
until I get to the edit table and get things up. <clears throat> so without further ado, hit like, hit subscribe, share my videos guys. I really want the channel to grow. We want to spread the word of hobbying in general. And don't forget, whatever you do, don't stop hobbying. Ciao.